Welcome to lecture number 18 for ECE 461 control systems, air constants, and steady state air. Now, previously we've looked at how to come up with models for different systems. That can be electric circuit, mass spring systems, rotational systems, DC servo motor. All those have transfer functions. Now we're going to start looking at feedback. Uh, feedback is where you take the output, and instead of having it controlled by the input directly, I'm going to form a feedback loop. I'll compare the output with what it should be. That creates an error. And from that error, I'll drive the system. That's called a unity feedback system. Uh, there's a couple examples. For example, like the cruise control in your car uses feedback. What it does is if I'm going too fast, or actually if the set point is faster than where I'm actually going, the air is positive and I push on the accelerator. I start to go faster. If the air is negative, meaning the R is less than Y, I'm going too fast, air is negative, and I take the accelerator and back off on it. If my speed is equal to the set point, say I'm going 55 miles an hour, whatever that accelerator is, do nothing, leave it there. That way what happens is that if I'm going too slow, I'll push on the accelerator, speed up. If I'm going too fast, I'll ease off on the accelerator, and eventually wind up going at the desired speed. That's the idea behind unity feedback. I can specify the set point and have the controller automatically figure out what to do rather than having to specify the input. Now air constants, the topic of this lecture, is trying to describe the behavior of the system in steady state with just a single number. The goal is to have no error. And I have to specify no error with respect to what kind of input. And there's three standard ones. I can say, is my input a constant? Say I want to set the temperature to 72 degrees and stay there. Can I track that? The input is a ramp. The temperature is slowly ramping up, like I'm heating a reflow oven. Can I track that? Uh, the reference is a parabolic input. Uh, why you do that, I'm not really sure, but that's another one. Constant acceleration. So look at the air constants in the steady state air, depending upon what type of input it is. A step, ramp, or parabola. And in general, bigger is better. For the air constants, I want the air constant constant to be as big as possible. Large air constants mean small air, and really the goal is to make the steady state air zero. Now a couple definitions. The system type is how many poles you have at s equals zero, so a type 2 system has two poles at s equals zero. The air constants are your kp, kv, ka. That's the dc gain of the plant. kp is the dc gain of g of s. Plug in s equals zero, I get a number. That's kp. KV says if my plant is an integrator, I can't let S go to zero for the integrator because that goes to infinity. So what it is, is it's the DC gain of S times G of S. Or think of it, G of S is an integrator at S equals zero. It's the gain of that integrator, KV over S. KA is if I have a type two system, two poles at S equals zero. I can't let S go to zero. So what I do is I clear out those two poles and find the DC gain. Or another way to think of it is it's a double integrator uh, what's that constant on top, Ka? And the steady state error is the error as t goes to infinity. Uh, again, the inputs, I've got three types, unit step, unit ramp, unit parabola. What the unit step came from, this actually dates back to World War II. Uh, the British were trying to shoot down German bombers flying over London. So the bomber is the target, point the anti-aircraft gun at the bomber. A step input says the bomber is hovering can I point the anti-aircraft gun at the, at the bomber, or does gravity pull it down so I miss the target? Um, that still makes sense today. Quite a few things are constants, such as I want the temperature of the room to be a constant, 72 degrees. I want the speed of my car to be constant, 55 miles an hour. So step responses are very common. That's usually how you specify a system. Uh, unit ramp says, well, you know, bombers don't hover, they actually fly. So if I want to track a bomber moving at a constant speed, that would be a ramp input. Uh, again, that kind of models some systems, like on reflow oven, I want the temperature to be constant, then I want it to ramp up, melt the solder, stay constant, then ramp down. The ramp areas would be, can I track that ramp? Parabolic inputs, again, going back to the German bombers, when a bomber flies, the anti-aircraft gun, as it flies straight overhead, at the zenith, kind of whips around, then it slows down. That whipping motion is kind of a parabola, so they looked at, can I track a parabolic input? Uh, track a bomber flying over London, straight ahead, straight overhead. What that models today, I'm not really sure. 
So the step response for unit parabola isn't uh, terribly common input anymore, but historically it's still there. And if you go to VSIM and look at the signal producers, I have a step input constant, a ramp input, a parabolic input. Again, that kind of dates back to World War II from shooting down bombers. Those are still included because they're kind of standard. Uh, not necessarily useful, but standard. So carrying on. The steady state error for step, ramp, or parabolic input depends upon what your system type is. Is it type 0, type 1, or type 2? So let's start with the type 0 system. If I have a type 0 system, the DC gain of the plant as S goes to 0 is just Kp. Now let's find the steady state error, E, as T goes to infinity for different inputs. If E, if R is the unit step, then E, the shortcut is the gain from R to E, which is just 1, over 1 plus the loop gain, 1 over 1 plus Kp, times 1 over S. Uh, take the inverse Laplace transform, and I have a constant with the amplitude of 1 over Kp plus 1. So that's the steady state error for a step input. If the input is a ramp, I wind up with 1 over 1 plus Kp times 1 over S squared. Inverse Laplace transform, that's T. The error goes to infinity as t goes to infinity. If you throw that in VSIM and look at the response, that's what you get. So here I have a step input to a system. The steady state error right here is the difference between the two. So I've got constant steady state error for a type 0 system with a constant input. As I increase the gain, make that 200 bigger and bigger, the error gets smaller and smaller. For example, here, this is the neat thing you can do with VSIM. What I did, uh, let's pause this, is went under Simulate, Simulation Properties, Auto Restart. And what that does, as soon as I finish, finish the simulation, it keeps going. And right click, uh, I did Fixed Bounds on the axis, so it doesn't keep on rescaling it. And here's an input, a slider. What I can do with the slider is I can vary the gain and see what happens. The plant has a DC gain of 1, so this is actually Kp. If Kp is small, the steady state error, the blue line, is very large. And the output doesn't go to 1, it's only getting to like you know, 0.2. As I increase the gain, that's increasing Kp. Notice the blue line, the error gets smaller. As K gets, Kp gets bigger, the error gets smaller and smaller. And the output, the red line, approaches 1. In addition, I start getting more and more overshoot. It would look like I want to make the gain as big as I can. But there's other constraints, it's like I start getting too much overshoot. But that's how a type 0 system behaves. As you increase the DC gain, the air gets smaller. If I make this a ramp input, it goes to block, signal, producer, uh, ramp. So there's my ramp input. And instead of doing this, uh, let's just have the input right here and the output. As I change the gain, that changes the slope. But notice the set point R and the plant have different slopes. That means the difference between the two are going up as t. As t goes to infinity, the error goes to infinity. So type 0 systems cannot track a ramp. So now let's look at a type 1 system. A type 1 system, as s goes to 0, is just a constant over s. That constant is Kv. That includes the plant and the compensator all together. The total gain is Kv. If I have a step input, R is 1 over S, plug in and evaluate, I get 0 over S plus this. That's a transient. This says the steady state error is 0. That means a type 1 system can track a constant set point with no error. And what happens is that if I do have an error, that's an integrator, I'm going to integrate up or integrate down. The integration constant is whatever it takes to force the error to zero. And here the integration constant is going to be y equals r, e equals zero. If I have a ramp input, the plus transforms 1 over s squared, I get a constant over s. So a type 1 system can track a ramp with constant steady state error. Error is going to be 1 over kv. Again, bigger is better. The bigger kv is, the bigger the dc gain is, the smaller the error. And it cannot track a ramp. The error becomes a ramp. Or, and let's just see here. If I try, try to track a constant, I get it dead on. 
try to track a ramp, I miss by a constant. And the bigger the DC gain, the smaller the error. The error is 1 over kV. So let's illustrate a type 1 system in VSIM. Here I just added another 0, or another pull at s equals 0. This makes it a type 1 system. And I can vary the error constant kp, actually kv right here. Uh, this is 1 over s as s goes to 0. As I vary kv, notice that for a step input, it's always tracking. Type 1 systems always track a constant set point. Doesn't matter what the gain is. So likewise, if it's a test and asks you what's the steady state error in this type 1, be happy. The answer is 0. I don't have to do anything. If I change it to a ramp input, uh, now notice that the error between the two is a constant. Uh, let's maybe increase the time scaling. Simulate, simulate properties. Let's go to 6 seconds. And change axis scaling. And now notice that the error is a constant. As I increase kV, the error gets smaller and smaller, but there's always a constant error. Um, that's, uh, again, uh, bigger is better. The bigger the error constant, the smaller the steady state error but I'm going to have constant error for ramp input. If I go to a parabolic input, again, I'm not exactly sure what that corresponds to, block, signal producer, parabola, and I'll run it. The error between the two is actually a ramp. So if instead, uh, let's do that in pink. Uh, pink show the steady state error. Notice the error is a ramp. As t goes to infinity, that goes to infinity. As I change the gain, the ramp gets smaller, but it's still a ramp. So the error type when systems cannot track parabolic inputs. Let's go to a type 2 system. If I had a type 2 system, the DC gain is Ka over S squared. Um, the transfer function from R to E is going to be S squared, or 1 over 1 plus Ka over S squared. Doing a little bit of algebra, it's S squared over S squared plus Ka. If my input is a step, I get 0 over S. If the input is a ramp, I get 0 over S squared, or 0 over S. If it's a parabolic input, 1 over s cubed, I get 1 over ka over s. So type 2 systems can track constants, they can track ramps, and they sort of track parabolas, but they miss a parabola with a constant steady state error. So the net result is if you simulate it, again, type 2 systems are great. If you can get them stable, I can track a step, I can track a ramp, And putting it all together, you have this table. Again, type, type 0 systems, kp is the DC gain. Type 1 system is the DC gain of s times g of s. Type 2 systems, ka is s squared times g of s as s goes to 0. And the steady state error for type 0 system, steady state error is 1 over kp plus 1 for a step. Can't track a ramp, can't track a parabola. Type 1 systems have no error for step input. But they can track a ramp with st constant steady state error, can track a parabola. Type 2 systems can track constants and, and ramps, and they miss a parabola by a constant. And you would think that this kind of tells you, well, if 1 is better than 0, 2 is better than 1, make it a type 20 system. Well, on paper that's nice, but you're going to have a real hard time stabilizing it. In practice, the type 2 systems are really hard to stabilize. There used to be a video game called Lunar Lander. There, the input is the force on a rocket, and the output is the integral, double integral of force. Force integrated once is velocity, velocity integrated once, twice, velocity integrated is position. So basically I have a double integrator. I want to specify the acceleration on a rocket so that as I come down to the planet, I land without crashing. 
with a lot of practice, a lot of quarters, you can get good enough at that at it that you can do it. With practice, you can can stabilize type two systems. Not easy, but can be done. What typically happens is you've got the rocket coming down. I start playing more thrust. I apply too much thrust and start shooting up. And then I let go on the thrust. It starts falling down again. I apply more thrust. I apply too much thrust. It shoots up. They tend to oscillate. Type 1 systems, on the other hand, are easy to control. That's like the cruise control in your car, the accelerator. I've got an integration constant. That's where the pedal is. What you do with a Type 1 system is, if I'm not going fast enough, push harder on the pedal, too fast, ease off on it. When I get going to the right speed, hold the pedal there. That's your integration constant. So Type 1 systems aren't hard to control. Type 2 are kind of nasty. And also, uh, Type 1 systems can track a constant set point. That's most of the set points that you're going to see. Uh, type 2 can track a ramp input. Those aren't real common. So it's trying to solve a fictitious problem, shooting down bombers over London with a double integrator. Um, if the problem doesn't exist and the solution is really hard, kind of why do it? So typically most systems you're going to come up with are type 1. But that's uh, error constants. Again, bigger is better. I want to describe the system with a single number. That's the error constant. The bigger the constant, the better it is. And the system type is how many zeros there are at s equals zero. The more, the better, if you can stabilize it. That's lecture number 18 for ECE 461, Control Systems, Error Constants.